Cartago de Linde Est. Welcome to your tutorial on the forms and uses of what we call the gerund and gerundive in Latin. Now that phrase, Cartago de Linde Est, is something that the senator Cato the Elder reportedly closed every speech with. What it means is Carthage must be destroyed. Now, delenda is a form of the verb that we call a gerundive. You can recognize a gerundive or a gerund easily since there is an ND in the ending. And also note the words gerundive and gerund are themselves parts of that form. So here, for instance, here's a lot of verb forms. Look for the ones that have an ND. There they are. Even though they've got some different endings, you've got an ND followed by forms of the first and second declension noun. Now, let's start with the gerundive. A gerundive describes an action that either must be done or is about to be done. We have borrowed some gerundives into English as nouns. We have in English these words that mean things that must be done. For instance, agenda. When a committee meets, they have an agenda, things that must be done. Old books sometimes had an appendix where they included addenda et corrigenda. The verb adere means to add. An addendum is something that must be added. You could have an addendum to the agenda of a committee meeting. And addenda is the plural, things that must be added. In the old days, if you made a mistake in a book, it was easier to have an appendix where you explained the things that were addenda, things that must be added. And also, if you made mistakes, the verb corrigere means to correct. And so, corrigenda are things that must be corrected. And in the example we've looked at, Cartago de Lenda Est, Carthage must be destroyed. You'll sometimes see grammar books refer to this as the passive periphrastic construction. Now, if you want to add an agent to that. In other words, it must be destroyed, but by whom? The one by whom it must be destroyed, you use the dative case. So if you were going to say Carthage must be destroyed by Rome, Cartago Romae de Linda Est. And another example, the food must be prepared by the cook, would be Cibus coquo parandus est. In the plural, villa lawanda est would be the house must be washed or cleaned. But if you want to say that it must be cleaned by the slave girls, dative plural, anquilis. Donum mihi dandum est. Here would be some neuters. The gift must be given by me. Normally mihi would be translated to me or for me. But in this type of a construction, it's the agent, by me. Now, gerunds have the same ND ending that you saw, but gerunds never have a nominative. Here's an example of a gerund. When you talk about somebody's MO, it's their modus operandi, a gerund in the genitive case. It's translated as mode of operating. Gerunds, you see, are verbal nouns. Here's a famous example. Unus homo nobis cunctando restituit rem. One person, by delaying, saved the Republic. This was Fabius Maximus. They criticized him, calling him the delayer, cunctator, because he wasn't attacking Hannibal in an outright battle. But by delaying, Rome eventually had its defenses strengthened, and Rome was saved. The important distinction here is between what we would call the gerund, the verbal noun, 
and the present active participle. One person, by delaying, in other words, by the act of delaying. But with a present active participle, it's actually an adjective describing what someone is doing. So if I said, I saw one person delaying, it would be unum hominem cunctantem vidi. As I said, gerunds can be used in all cases except the nominative. Here's one in accusative following ad, paratus ad discedendum, ready to leave. Here's one in the genitive, ars docendi, the art of teaching. Again, these are verbal nouns. In the dative, following an adjective that wants dative, suitable, suitable for something, locus legendo idoneus, a place suitable for reading. In the ablative, discimus docendo, we learn by teaching. Now, a final point about the gerund. When a gerund has an object, that object can be in the accusative. And so following this example we just looked at, we learn by teaching. If we want to say we learn by teaching and then an object, let's say Latin, we could say we learn by teaching Latinam, accusative. But most of the time, a gerund is not going to take an accusative. Instead, look at what happens. When a gerund has an object, the object is usually in the same case as the gerund, but the gerund takes on the gender of the object. So we learn by teaching. It was docendo because it was ablative, but because Latina is feminine, now it becomes the ablative form for the feminine. But now the object is not accusative. The object is ablative to match the gerund. This even extends into the plural. When you have a plural object, the plural number of the object gets put onto the gerund. The gerund is still ablative because it's ablative by sense. We learn by teaching. And yet, docendis linguis have merged the forms between themselves. So be on the lookout for that very weird thing.